The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unu Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Everybody, welcome to Ask for Candy, a hundred own ways to make your love and your life sweeter. Love chat with grown women show. Listen, I am Candace Harper, lovecoach.com, and I teach and inspire audacious intimacy to powerful, professional, grown women who want real relationships and seductive singlehoods. And I always say dating and relationships can be hard, but love, love is easy. You are listening to Armed Radio, maybe on your smart device with your tune-in app, or maybe you're in the garden on armedradioglobal.com, or we're also now available on iHeartRadio. Woo! And also, I think that if you have an Alexa, you can just ask for candy. Don't we love that? <laughs> I love that. We love that. Or you're joining us here on Facebook Live. And if you are, you can see my beautiful guest, Julia, who I'm going to introduce in a second. But I want you also to know that if you have any questions, if you want to talk to us, you know this is a conversation, you can call in at 1-800-508-5431 to comment or question us live right here on Facebook. I see we already have Sean and Barry and Russell. So you talk about female orgasm and all the dudes show up. (laughs) Right? It's perfect. So like I said, I'm Candice Harper, lovecoach.com. My talent is conversation. My passion is personal growth. And my purpose is to teach and inspire radical self-acceptance in myself and in others so that we can all have our best possible love life. And my guest tonight... (laughs) I'm so excited about, first of all, let me just tell you, my guest tonight is like my hero because I had a different guest, a different co-host, and she she had to like, you know, drop out at the last minute, but we understand, we love her, we send her love. She replaced herself with this lovely goddess, Happy Julia, at Happy Julia from SexEdWithJulia.com, founder of, and sex educator, right? Yes. Sex educator. <laughs> I actually feel like that would have been my calling had I known it was a thing. Sex education. It's never too late. It's never too late, right? (laughs) (laughs) But listen, Julia, tell us about yourself. Tell us what you're up to and what you're about and what it means to be a sex educator. We want to hear about it. Of course. Well, thank you for having me. Yes. Second, I appreciate that. I love the energy. Like, I feel it was meant to be. (laughs) No, totally. Absolutely. It was meant to be. um, What it means to be a sex educator is really teaching people to know that they are okay and they, they don't have anything and no problems. It's really um, to teach people freedom mm. and actually support them in feeling that whatever whatever they want to do is actually okay and, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, so starting with that, actually giving the permission for people to be who they are and to live their authentic sexual life, not what, you know, magazines say, not what journals say, not what we can see on TV and all that Photoshop sexuality, right? Or yeah. sexuality that we think that should look like, or, you know, certain labels that we think that we should, oh, if, you know, if I like this, then I should probably this or that. Uh, and actually teaching that now you actually can be free and create whatever you want and have that authentic sexuality that works for you at that moment in your life, mm-hmm. in that body that you are, right? With the partner that you are versus looking at having that, you know, um, one size fits all life, um, sexual life, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. I love that. Because I, I also am very aligned with like, you know, having what individually works for you, Absolutely. which is why I'm not really about like the tips and tricks world mm-hmm. where it's like, you must do this and don't do this. And this is, you know, the shoulds and shouldn'ts. Yeah. It, you're right. It's really about individually, like Absolutely. what feels organic to you, not trying to meet up to some standard. Mm-hmm. Right. So tell me how you became a sex educator. Like what was your, tell us a little bit about your journey. You know, every time people ask me, um, you know, why I chose it, I always say I didn't choose it. It chose me. Okay. And I, I really authentically feel that because uh, I was always very about, you know, sexual. I never understood why people cannot talk about sexuality. For me, it was like, what's like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> like, why we can just 
where are you from though? I, I detect an accent. So I'm I feel from like, Lithuania. Lithuania. Well, yeah. I feel like maybe culturally there, because you know it's very puritanical here in the U.S. So if you're trust me, Lithuanian is a very uptight country. Is it? Oh, so it's, okay. It's like the furthest from when it comes to sexual conversations. Really? <laughs> yeah, up till now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was really. But I always felt this kind of a freedom inside of me around that, right? Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to talk about that. I always want to study that. I never knew how to get there because there's up till today, there's no specific path, you know, mm-hmm. as you go, you know, if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, you know, when there's no specific path to become or regulations to become, become a sex educator, right? Yeah. And they haven't even been recently to become a sex therapist. Um, you basically, you know, like even 10 years ago, you just couldn't be like a regular therapist take a few courses on sex education and you can sell, you can call yourself, um, you know, a sex therapist. That's yeah. how easy it was. But I didn't like that, right? So it took me a while to figure it out. But uh, lately, at some point, I just knew this is the path. Um, or, you know, because a lot of people came to me to speak about that. This was a topic that I could read until 4 a.m. and I worry about the time. You know, it was like just very kind of those signs. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just own that and be that and stop fighting that and worrying about that, you know? Yeah. I feel that I had to come up out of my own closet, you know, to be that because it's like, oh, what do you know people will say? How, you know, like what's going to be? Well, you know, my mom still says that I'm uh, a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> like what she's talking to her friends. Yeah, she's like, like, okay, mom. <laughs> right. uh, my, mom my mom still says I work in fashion, and that was like 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, so. and I get it. I get it's it. easier, you know. Because yeah. it's also for her to put her own comfort. But like, yes. you know, she would have been probably comfortable to talk about that. Totally. Um, so, yeah, I get it. But, yeah, it, it's, it's really was just, um, I feel it always was in me. It was just a time to actually tap into that and allow myself and own that and embrace that and actually look, you know what, I, I am, this is this is what I do, this is what I love, this is what I'm good at. Yeah. Um, just, you know. Yeah, oh, I love that. You just kind of like came into your own with it. I love it. Well, let me ask you this question. So when it comes to your own dating life, you don't have to tell me too much about your personal life, but like, do you find that people are either really intrigued or really titillated with what you do and and how does it how do you incorporate it in your own relationship life so um <laughs> when it comes to my own life i feel that there, um i did met men right mm-hmm. so i feel that one, one group of men right away want to like prove how good they are it's like <laughs> right away like, they're like, oh, that's that's the way like let me show you what i got <laughs> and i'm like okay great <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then there's another group feel that i feel that they um Maybe the opposite, right? Mm. So they're like, okay, like, so, because I'm, beyond that I'm also, you know, studying sex, sexuality, I'm also, I'm very, expre- you know, as you can see, I'm very alive person, I express yeah. myself. So, you know, I can be a little bit like, for some people, it's like a little bit too much. And I feel that, right? And, it's, you know, as they call, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, that there's anything wrong with me. But there it's like, yeah, it goes both ways sometimes. It's like, oh, let me, you know, I want to know what you got. I want to see that. Yeah. Some people, oh, you know, I want to see what you, what you can teach me. Yeah. And then there are people like, oh, okay. Thinking that you'll be like. <laughs> like, yeah. Which <laughs> in reality, and your sex educator, you know, and, I, you know, I, I talk a lot. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people ask, you know, they give me something, they tell me something like, oh, you don't know what it means? I'm like, you know, I don't know everything, right? <laughs> like in any subject, like right? Maturity. There is like, yeah, I'm all, you know, mm-hmm. I'm studying it, but there's always things, right? But yeah, I feel that, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love it. I'm so excited you're here, Julie. Let's awesome. see who's come on live. We have a bunch of people that have signed on. We have um, Donna and Beth. Beth says, yay. She's excited with the yes. sex <laughs> <laughs> Michelle joined us. Michelle, who has to come back another time. The reason Julia's here is because of Michelle. Hey, Michelle. And Wayne is here. And Beth says, how does she feel about sexuality in the Me Too movement? Oh, that's a big question. A Wait, big let question. me say hi to Lee real quick. Hi, Lee. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. If you guys want to call in and join the conversation, it's 1-800-508-5431. And yes, Julia, how do you feel about sexuality in the Me Too movement? Or what are your oh. thoughts on that? Based on Beth's... Cr- Thank you, Beth. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um, how do I feel? Um, I haven't thought about it for a while. That's what I'm like. How do I feel? Like the unexpected. It's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think when it comes to any movement, there is always, like, a lot of sides of the coin, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely feel that women's sexuality have been repressed for so many years. Um 
everything, you know, in yeah. politics and education, you know, when it comes to all women's sexuality, basically never existed, right? Yeah. Um, so now when we start to talk about topics, uh, you know, things like, you know, like Me Too movement comes out or any, any sexual movement comes out, clearly there's a lot of, you know, a lot of everything with, with what's going on in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that until we, you know, until we're going to, until we're gonna have those types of movements, a lot of them, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk about rape. rape we're gonna talk about feminine yeah, sexuality being repressed. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, we need to talk about it to have the balance, yes. right? We need to. It's kind of we need to talk because it was repressed. Mm-hmm. Now we're taking it out there. Yeah. So in order for all those movements, actually, also kind of be in a balance, you know, some time will pass, yeah. right? Like it opened up the conversation. It opened up the conversation, right? That was actually in there for you know. The conversation was there. It's yeah. not it wasn't, right? Yeah. It's just now um, more out there, which is amazing because we need those conversations. Because otherwise, things are not going to get healed or, you know, fixed, quote unquote. But, you know, that you know, we need those conversations. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do, too, with taking ownership over our sexuality, which doesn't necessarily have to be threatening to men. I think with, with, I mean, this is just my own opinion, not being a sex educator, but my opinion about like the movement itself is I totally agree with you. Like it's, it is now like offered an opportunity to get really Mm -hmm. empowered. Right. But also, um, you know, I think the way that it is sort of, uh, handled in the media, it's almost like it's a little bit threatening, I think, culturally for men. Mm. But I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to like find that common ground where it's like everybody's allowed to be sexual, exactly. but knowing how to not manipulate and hurt and mm-hmm. use people with it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. And I also think, again, <laughs> as for every movement, sometimes we think that because we're going for something, it's like we go against something. Right? Exactly. Like you have to resist something. Like, yeah, right? it's, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, well, pe- most of the people who are not really know what feminism is, right? But it's like, well, you know, feminism, it's like repressing men. And I'm, and it's like, no, mm-hmm. feminism is for everyone. And it's really about women rising. Yeah. So if some men feel that women rising makes them feel like they have to lower. Like, get your, <laughs> like, you kind of get your life together, right? Yeah. Like, it's really for women's you know any movement and you know women's movement is like for everyone is rising and you feel that that's so much free well that's your call i mean it's not you know that's your call it's up to you but like don't like it's not against anything yeah, you know exactly. not, it's just really we as a humanity rising like it's just we in a rising stage because yeah. everything so you know people of color were repressed women were repressed um disabilities people with disabilities right like the half of the century that didn't exist so now there's a lot of movement who you know or personalities who were repressed we are actually rising yeah and some people feel that oh you know a lot of people say well all women become so masculine now one man gonna do <laughs> <laughs> right it's like this you yeah. know like it's it- not about women becoming masculine it's about a woman stepping like up into the journeys yeah. and then if we actually all gonna step up the world will gonna look different like everyone can have value every right, right? <laughs> if, like we are doing it all for everyone. So if we're all going to step up, it's actually going to look differently versus, you know, like saying, oh, you know, you know, they kind of, re- no one is trying to repress men. We mm-hmm. actually all going together and trying to heal things that were not working in the past and actually, you know, so they would serve everyone moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's perfect. Absolutely. So who else joined us? Sashay joined us. Sashay Shantae. I know Shantae. I haven't seen you forever, honey. <laughs> and Sean says, rise up. <laughs> Sean, I love it. I love a male feminist. <laughs> we all get to rise up. Right? Exactly. We all get to rise up. Okay. So for those of you who have never um, listened to the show before and have never been on the live broadcast, what this show is about each week, we have lively conversations about different topics relating to love and relationships. Sometimes we bring on special guests like my friend Julia here. Sometimes we play games and activities, but always we will get a chance to laugh, cry, or just learn something new. And that is why everybody who doesn't know it, this is a conversation. We're not here to just like hand you a bunch of rules and tell you, you know, what's right and what's wrong. It's definitely not the right and wrong conversation. We're not here to shame your love situation because like the release of shame is so important, right? Like we're not about that. And our intention here is to create audacious intimacy and seductive singlehoods and healthy relationships. And so with our ongoing series, we're going to be, you know, it's the summer of sexploration, everybody, (laughs) right? And tonight we are going to be talking about how to become wildly orgasmic (laughs) with Julia. I'm so like, 
I'm a total goofball and totally giddy about it and totally like people think that, you know, because I'm a coach that I'm, you know, very sophisticated and I don't mind <laughs> say, but I'm seriously a third grader. Okay. But also I'm willing to admit that that's a little bit of a defense mechanism because mm. it like prevents me from having to like have the serious discussion. I'm very, I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> right. But the reason we're going on the summer of sex exploration is because I know I need to have this mm -hmm. discussion and, you know, and for those of you out there, my sister friends who also need to have this, this discussion. We all need to have this discussion. We all need to have this discussion. Right? We all need to be able to talk freely about our love lives. We all need to talk from a place of, you know, not being ashamed of it. So, you know, I love, I just really want to, because I think it was such an important point. And I love how you said we're not here to say rules, right? Mm -hmm. And say that, you know, this is what you will have to do. That. And I feel it's so important when it comes to sexuality because we have so many rules that we created and we believe that yeah. we like that's what actually like all that sight right and it doesn't really allow that place of orgasm or wildness or natural or authentic sexuality to occur right because we believe that there are rules that we have to follow or there are things that you know have to be and yeah like really there is no rules it's always in a discussion either you know mm -hmm. you talk to you know to your journal or to your partner or to your girlfriend or to you know to your to your men around you it's really always you know inside of that discussion yeah i love that yeah Absolutely. yes oh i love it we're so aligned <laughs> this so is aligned. perfect thank you michelle for sending julia I, love her. <laughs> I feel like she's going to be my new sex coach to tell you the truth so i found this article mm -hmm. and i you know i the people who come on often, they know I often do. Like, I like to find different things online. And because everyone is allowed to put information online, as long as you have a computer, I feel like it's good to always vet your information, Absolutely. right? And to make sure that it's good, valid, and that it can possibly work for you. And also figure out how it can work for you, mm -hmm. right? So we are blessed to have Julia here because this is something that she studies. And I found an article that's that's um, titled, Eight Wonderful Ways to Become More Orgasmic. Right? And they're wonderful ways. Wonderful. We're going to find out if they're wonderful. And also, Julia's going to, like, put her licks on it and give us, so to speak, <laughs> and give us... <laughs> Everything's going to be double entendre from here on in. <laughs> but she's going to give us some, you know, input and, and you know, some some chunky some content to, to walk away with, right? Fantastic. All right. So, the eight wonderful ways. We're going to start with number one. Number one, according to HerSolution.com, Eight Wonderful Ways to Become More orga Orgasmic, it all starts in the mind. And, and they say, yes, we all know this. For women, sex starts in the mind. In order to reach that mysterious orgasm, or, orgasm point, a woman's mind should be fully captivated. The truth is that many women are preoccupied with the other myriad of things they have going on in their lives, making sexy thoughts difficult. Mm. Says if you or he says if you are working to become more orgasmic, ensure that your mind should be ready as well. Keep your mind clutter free by getting rid of your personal and professional issues. Undoubtedly, a concentrated and stress free mind is a first step towards achieving the ultimate pleasure for all women. What say you, Julia, about all of that? I definitely agree with that, right? Um, definitely agree with that. I don't know if it's not, it's not always the first thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always different situations, right? With the physical body, you know, there's some th physical things. There are, um, they can be, the, you know, the, 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 like what I'm saying, there are many layers to that, right? Yeah. But, be, you know, it all sounds with the mind in a way that you cannot have orgasm if you're not present, mm -hmm. right? If you are, because we can be physically there. Yeah. How many times are thinking about the grocery list? Exactly. And how many times it happens, right? We're kind of there, but in reality, we're like, oh, that, you know, that scratch that I had of some my boy, you know, my boss, yeah. or that and this. Also, many times we also think about, as I speak about, you know, women mostly, we think about our bodies, yeah. right? How do my tie feel? Like, can, can, can you see my, my belly? Back. How do I smell right now? You know, if it's world right. sex. Did I shave? Did I shave? <laughs> you know, you know, it's like, we really go all into that things that may not be necessarily like needed at that time, right? Yeah. So being present to your um, senses, mm. right? So like actually feel touch, mm. right? When you get kiss here and there, like a lot, a lot, like allow that kiss actually go into you, yeah, right? Yeah. Versus like, oh, I love that. Like, <laughs> it's a way like, I, 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 <laughs> What's not going to work if you're going to be there laying there, okay, I have to be present, I have to be present. Yeah. Like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, trying to concentrate, to make it happen. Yeah, that, like, that's not going to be present, right? But yeah. literally, like, focusing on your breath, right? Mm. Anytime we find ourselves thinking about, you know, the grocery list or, you know, about how we smell or how we look, 
like really go inside me and like you know like allow that breath go in and follow it through the body right yeah. like kind of dissolving into the in, in bed right or you know kitchen or bathroom <laughs> like wherever <laughs> whenever that place library. is right the library <laughs> um you know focusing on breath, focusing on senses um sounds mm -hmm. right again many times wouldn't make sounds because our sexual voices are repressed right because of mm -hmm. certain beliefs certain experiences in the past you know so many you know like you know there's there's like a lot to go to but right like yeah. the majority of us uh, we have our sexual voice, voice repressed mm -hmm. right because totally society because we how we grow up you have certain event happens in our lives it's all so sometimes it's hard for us to actually make sounds yeah right because there's shame what if neighbors Even massages like i find myself a little embarrassed mm. if i make too much noise i mean i've gotten better over the years especially when i first started getting massages i was afraid to like vocalize yeah, yeah. which i wanted to like i totally wanted to <laughs> <laughs> I totally wanted to. Yeah, but I wouldn't. Like I was just like, you yeah, know, yeah. But that, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's great. Because that's, you know, it's not only you know. Again, you know, our sex life is not all. It's not only like. Um, it's not separated from our life. Yeah. Right. So the same we can take massages or yoga classes. You know, anytime I work with my clients, I always you know offer them to do yoga. And then I always tell them when you do yoga, like be in the pose, yeah. like actually feel it. Yeah. And they say, oh, tell me, you know, I'm always in my head when I do yoga. Yeah. Oof. Horrible. Right? I, love, I love yoga and I, I can tell when I'm in my head, mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. There's yeah. such a difference. Same with, yeah. sexual, you know, with the, with the sex. That's, you know, when we're present, that's what actually, so when they say uh, it all starts with our mind, mm -hmm. it's really, you know, being that present. Uh, and I, it's actually, I, I would say, you know, two things out of that. One is being present. Another thing is really checking in on what are those beliefs around shame and yeah. pleasure and sexuality and, and body image and how I feel in my body. So, you know, all of that adds to that moment, yeah. you know, because if I'm going to be walking around all day, hating my body and thinking that I'm ugly, fat, you know, this and that, and then come to the bedroom and be like, oh, now I'm going to be orgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to It's not going to work. Don't become a sex goddess from being like, from just somebody like, who's beating yourself up all day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really all connected. Yeah. So definitely when it, you know, it's all starts in mind, it's really, yeah, it's, it's definitely connected. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love that. <laughs> Yay. See, we're learning tonight, people. Who joined? Joe Savino joined us, my sweet love. And Angela Bowens, my other sweet love. What did Lee say? Locking eyes and sharing each breath is amazing. Yes, yes honey. Who doesn't want to do that? Connection. Absolutely. Eye connection. Yep. Right? And my Evie, she joined. Hi, honey. I'm glad to see you. Or at least see your name and know you're here. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's go. Also, people who want to call in, 1-800-508-5431. The second one is free yourself of negative emotions. Apart from making your mind free of useless thoughts, it is highly imperative to be free of your negative emotions as well, which we kind of touched mm -hmm. on. But the, um, they say women who are often trapped in a vicious cycle of guilt, fear, anxiety, and worries are often those who find it hard to achieve the maximum benefits of sex. Most guys blame themselves for not bringing their partner to orgasm, but the real cause is far beyond their control. The list of negative emotions is endless, but they usually include the general suspects such as body shape, lack of sleep, illness, and professional glitches, which I don't know what professional glitches is, but we'll, we'll touch on that. So if you want to scale the mountain of sexual pleasure, try to eliminate negative thoughts and frustrations. Try journaling or talking to a close friend over coffee. What do you think about all of that, Julia? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And as we, as you said, we touch up on that, right? It's, well, there are two things that I, um, I really want to um, talk about. One is definitely those negative emotions when we live through life right either stress at work or stress with our kids or you know stress in relationship mm -hmm. uh again right if there is no coming to the idea that sex is not separated from our lives right so there is no connection in relationship it's hard to bring connection into the bedroom mm -hmm. right and clearly when i said bedroom it's you know any any, any place of choice but mm -hmm. um yeah so it's, it's really comes all together right so when we go you know if we are as they mentioned in, in, in this paragraph, you know, if, if woman is very controlling in life, you know, if she runs uh, with it, again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you know, when you actually connected to that, right? So I may be very, have masculine energy when it comes to my job because I need to be, you know, I need to do things. I need to get results done. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need that. I cannot just meditate all day. I would love yeah. to. Right? I would too. <laughs> just meditate I would and like masturbate all day. Unless sit it's by me, the right? river. Right. <laughs> but I need that masculine energy, right? But yeah. then I, I need to know how to change the hat. Yeah. Right. I need to know how to change the hat. Um, 
and again there is a place of control in sex as well there is a place of control and there you know there is it's, it's another it's another topic but there's place of that but again it's being aware what shows up right yeah. on what do you want to create so if there is anxiety uh, during the day if there is you know uh, stress it all goes to that right yeah. so uh, it really i will say orgasm starts way before you get into the bedroom yeah. you know it really starts with that and another thing that i wanted to talk about is you know there was a sentence that a lot of men um a lot of guys blame themselves for not bringing the woman to orgasm. Mm -hmm. uh, every woman is responsible for her own orgasm. Yes. Right? It's real. Orgasm is your responsibility uh, because I, like, a woman gets to create that for herself, yeah. right? By releasing, you know, by being present, by going through, um, you know, through breath and all that. Um, it's really not anyone's responsibility to make. It's, very, it's a lot of pressure on someone. <laughs> like, make this right? happen for me. Make it happen to me. I'm just going to lay here. I'm just going to go away, you know. <laughs> and it's always giving up your power. Yeah. Because there's a lot of power in your pleasure and orgasm. And when you say that, I cannot do that, but someone outside of me can. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. It kind of means that, oh, so you have the power over me. Well, what do you... Let me ask you this. Based yeah. on that, like, how do you balance... Sort of the, um, like you were talking about, letting go of that masculine energy from the day and then still being responsible yeah. for your own orgasm. Like, how do you, you know, what in action can you do to sort of balance that and, you know, work? It does, you know, everything is work. Yeah. Relationship is work. Uh, spirituality is work. Balance is work. Sex life is work as well, right? Yeah. So really incorporating the mindful practices, meditation, yoga, uh, you know, the, you, uh, there are womb practices, right? Mm -hmm. There are things that yoni acts to really, you know, tie them ourselves. There are masturbation, which always helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, like really working on your sexuality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, journaling about things, knowing we can connect it to your beliefs, right? And really balancing is also knowing that, okay, so if I am a boss at work, now I'm home with my partner. Mm -hmm. How do I need to use, right? Mm -hmm. And it may be the same hat, you know, depending on, <laughs> it may be, you know, right. depending on the relationship, because some, you know, we choose, uh, you know, whatever the relationship we choose, in some relationship we are in control, and we still need to wear the same hat, but be, mm -hmm. being aware of that, right? Actually knowing, and okay, if I, if I, if I need to let go and like actually leave my work at work mm -hmm. and now be connected with my partner, put the phone away, close the computer, mm -hmm. and actually like have that time, um, quality time with them, right? Um, that's then what it is, yeah. right? And actually, it's really awareness. It's really, you know, awareness is the key to everything. And it's really being, what am I doing right now, right? What do, what kind of practices I use in life? Do I dance? Hmm. Do I do yoga? Do I, uh, you know, whatever your choice is. Maybe it's art. Maybe it's maybe it's singing. Maybe like it's you, painting. What's your creativity? What's what your creativity? Right? Like what, like it's, uh, feminine, you know, it's very important for creativity, yeah. right? Uh, and we find it through whatever works for you, you know, through, through, through writing, through painting, but like that's so important. Yeah. And it's also important to actually schedule it in your calendar. I hear because we so get to like really, oh, you know, and especially, you know, in, in today's world, women, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, and we forget to do those things what matters for, to bring us pleasure. Yeah. Right? I always tell my clients, write down 10 things what brings you pleasure. And next day, put it in, in your calendar right now. Yeah. Like right now, I want you to put it in your calendar because otherwise it gets forgotten. Because what we learned when we were, most of us, when we were growing up, pleasure needs to be deserved. Mm. Right? So I need to move That's balance true. first. Yes. I, need to, like, I need to be like good enough, good and enough. sexy enough. And, and then yeah. I can have some pleasure. Yeah. Life, right? And then I'm allowed a reward. At the time yeah. when I'm like dead and I don't even need pleasure because I'm like inside of me, I'm <laughs> just like depressed food and things we Absolutely. buy ourselves and all of that stuff everything's about the reward system because mm -hmm. that's what we're conditioned to yeah. think and i think we do sex the same way absolutely yeah like i'm not thin enough to deserve sexual pleasure yeah you know like wait well, I, I even cannot have it I, because yeah. i'm not thin enough because only like skinny people can have orgasms yeah. <laughs> like little like, and you know i don't I don't think men do this. Women, we mind fuck ourselves with all of this. Oh I don't, so men, I don't think you do this. And if you do, chime in. If you're on Facebook Live, chime in and let us know if you do anything like yeah. this. Or call in 1-800-508-5431. If you do anything like this, sort of, and it's part of what keeps us from being orgasmic. It's part of keeps us because all of that 
it just makes us tight and control and you know they've come again conversation ahead in our head keeps us away from being present right yeah. uh and it also the same way thinking that someone else own like can you know have to give us an orgasm like owes you an orgasm owes me right <laughs> and it's like okay i'm just gonna wait here yeah and then we say well you know they were not good enough or they you know they didn't know what to do with me well have you told them what's but what do you think about like okay so if i'm going in and i'm all responsible for my orgasm and everything like that and i totally agree mm-hmm. with that but then like when you're with your partner and they're wanting to like you know to, to do it yeah <laughs> they're wanting to make it happen like how do you um you know take the reins on that without going into you know masculine energy and not like forcing it like what what do you well, suggest really, as a way so to, like, you deserve to have you like you deserve to have what you like to to get yeah right in a way if i like my um if i like my head massage i deserve to have it right mm-hmm. and someone will be giving me God, i like everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but if, for example if i hate if i would i do not mm-hmm. if i would hate you know feed massage and then i like head and everything you know everything my partner does that gives me the feed like you know what i'm saying i get to tell him right yeah in a way that you know i get to express my desires is the same way they get to express their desires and i you know i you know and i give it to them right yeah. um it's really it's it's a dance because you definitely want to then handle their they're sort of, you know, and I'm, I don't want to generalize because all men don't have an ego issue. Mm-hmm. But you do want to, like, especially sexually, sort of be gentle yeah. with male ego. So well, listen, like, it, you don't want to be like, okay, know, I got this. Watch me go. Well, yeah. What, what we, <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how we need to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, when we say you're responsible, it's not like you're responsible, meaning you're doing everything 100% and no one yeah, is needed right. for that, right? It's just communication. It's just really, you're responsible for your communication. Yeah. You're responsible for your body movement. You're responsible to take yourself to be present right mm. it's really uh a lot of that really in communication piece like i i am responsible to tell my partner what i like yeah you know because if he's not doing something that i like i cannot say well he's not doing what i like and then complain about and it. then complain <laughs> about that because it's like well i haven't told him yeah <laughs> right yeah. it's really and allow and the, it's kind of like it's really a dance that it's not as much you know it's not in our brain it's more in our like you know souls and mm. the energy so it's like being in that dance and like telling partners, showing, and they trusting that they will do it. Yeah, yeah. And if not, they kind of like going with them with the flow, um, you know, making the body more. But it's not like you have to tell everything, you know, how to all be like this, 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 this is what you do. This, yeah. this. Like, no, they get to get creative and, you know, be in a dance with them. And, you know, it's kind of a, you know, connection within the souls. So it's, it's really, yeah, it's really just being in that flow together and figuring things together and mm-hmm. dancing in that and seeing and talking you know in doing the body conversation verbal conversation all, all inside of that yeah i love it. wait what yeah. did lee say he says i feel your partner can help by not distracting her from the moment oh wait my da- what do you recommend to all of those partners to not distract not to distract her from having an orgasm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the yeah. male partner can support you by not like distracting you. He's saying, what What do you recommend to do to not distract her? I guess, <laughs> like if she's maybe getting there. I guess, like, I, like, I don't know what kind of distraction, but I know what <laughs> Are you talking about support. baseball league? Yeah, like, you... what's, like, what's going to happen in there? What will support, right, to have those orgasms, um, especially when it comes to distractions? Trust is a big part to one, you know, for women for orgasms, mm. right? And trust is a huge yes, part for some of us less, for some of us more. You know, trust meaning trust of environment where I am, right? For a lot of people, again, going back to the shame conversations, you yeah. know, the neighbors, that. So it's like knowing that uh, I'm in a safe environment, mm-hmm. right? Especially for um, for some of us who have traumas, you know, sexual traumas. And I'm not always talking about sexual abuse. We can have all kind of different traumas. Mm-hmm. you know we do um so like really having that safety knowing that i'm safe so mm-hmm. providing from from you know from how a partner can support is actually providing that safety um you know environmentally right um then actually that trust in the partner mm-hmm. right that connection piece yeah that i trust you I, because, so being trustworthy is one way that a partner can yeah very it's much really providing you. that trust outside of um outside of that bedroom again right yeah. because it's not magically happening that it happens in there right it's really have knowing that you can lean on me yeah right you can because like in sex we are naked not only physically yeah right sometimes it's easy sometimes to take our clothes off but like open our soul and yeah. be vulnerable and yeah. actually be like this is me me yeah. right intimacy into me see yeah. it's that's when it sometimes gets tricky right so like actually 
telling your partner like you can lean on me yeah like i'm here for you yeah and even sometimes saying in in bed like i'm here like i feel you i got you i got you oh, i see that's so you sexy i feel it just in your right face. like look at the partner's <laughs> eyes i'm just yeah. saying like yeah it's, like totally right yeah. um so creating that right and asking your partner what do you what do you do you need to feel comfortable mm -hmm. some of people need music and it's it's only it's also feel comfortable but sometimes all of us have also different you know things sometimes yeah. you know maybe i mean music maybe i need light on or off yeah maybe i need you know pillows behind because i have it's all, another thing sometimes we forget about physical we mm. always th think that everyone is like physically the same equipped and physically the same you know comfort yeah no it's not always yeah maybe some someone needs that extra you know pillow like behind their back, back yeah. support in the back right or like put the ass up like you know whatever's <laughs> working or like maybe like maybe i have my knees pain right yeah um because it happens actually a lot people are going through pain in sex because they're ashamed to say that mm. And they're like, well, I don't get an because I can feel pain in my knees. Well, you need to change the pose. Yeah. So you need to speak to your partner and say, hey, I'm actually feeling pain this way. Can we, like, how can we actually, like, way. manage it in the front? And you know what? It's I love that you mentioned that because I feel like, you know, myself included, I always say, like, you know, just from talking to clients or talking to friends or whatever, as women, we are so willing to endure things. Like, you know, we... we a lot of times, and I think it's maybe more when we're younger, but we'll sort of put up with things and like be okay with like your head banging yeah. on the headboard or things like that, thinking that that is part of being a, a exactly, giver yeah. sexually. <laughs> Which is, I, you know, ultimately it's not. Like if a guy actually cares about you, he doesn't want to exactly. be hurting you while you're having sex with him, right? Yeah. But, you know, I think of like my own experiences and, you know, experiences of friends and things like that where the talk was always about like, being uncomfortable in some kind mm -hmm. of way, but not actually saying it, and then you yeah. know, not being able to get there. Exactly. You're like you know, the back of your head in the headboard or something, you know, that doesn't mm -hmm. work. Listen, sex as its own is already uncomfortable. It yeah. is smelly. It is liquidy. It you know it Sticky has sometimes. it has all the stuff that it's already like there. You know? Like no, there is no need to go through pain unless it's like unless it's your thing and it's on purpose. Like that's the purpose of, of, of the you know, purpose of the exercise, right? The yeah. purpose of that of, of the of the sexual practice, right? And then, then that's another conversation. But if it's if it's not. And there is no need to that. Like yeah. the purpose of sex is have joy and pleasure, you know, the, the spiritual connection, you know, you know, whatever the purpose is. But, you know, and it can be the pain can be purpose. But if it's not, then like, then it's not. Yeah. And there's no need to go through that. Like if you, yeah. And, you know, again, you know, when it comes to heterosexual sex, it's really because we have such a long conversation for so many years that sex is for men. Mm. Oh, I'm not supposed to do I'm just like giving sex. Right, mm -hmm. it's like he's taking. You know, it, same comes with it when it comes to when it comes to um, you know conversation about virginity and all that stuff. That it's like, oh, you give your virginity away. You know, you're like, mm -hmm. there's someone to take you sexually, yeah, yeah. and that gets stuck with us. Yeah. So then we think, oh, it's not about my pleasure. I'm here to give pleasure, so I can, you know, my head can go to to the wall as long as he's, you know, as long as it's like he's on a way to come and it's like for him. Yeah. Well, and somehow it, my value lessens if I'm if I'm not this certain thing. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, if I'm gonna say that, like, it's like. Like, oh, you know, then then I'm not good in bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All those definitions, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right? It's like, Wait, what did Lee say? He says, "LOL, you talked about communication. Definitely not baseball." <laughs> oh, so he's saying the communication. <laughs> I feel the emotional connection, being in the moment, being part of the moment, and trust is important. Sharing emotional vulnerability helps too. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for that. Lee. Absolutely. But I guess he's talking about like while you're trying to communicate, you don't want to distract. <laughs> <laughs> that's the risk that we like that's the risk that we get to take yeah. there is no right way yeah and like be ready that you're gonna like mess it up yeah and it's okay right like, like definitely like, you're gonna mess the it mistakes up the mistakes happen the queefs and the embarrassment and the whatever exactly <laughs> like they, that definitely because that's what he, you see that's what actually the belief that we should make it right yeah. keeps us away from that authentic sex like we talk about wild sex right wild sex is like you getting naked from all parts with your body with like being able you know to like sometimes maybe i don't know fart sometimes you know maybe <laughs> fall down off the bed you know like yeah. that's what like actually give the price fall down off the bed and fart <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. and then be on yourself it's like yeah but like you know when you go risk to that yeah. like the price is higher yeah you know then the price is higher than authentic sex right yeah. and so there's no right way to communicate that in inside of when you have sex 
until you like really on the same page and you know your partner so well that you know when to say when you get quiet, right? Absolutely. And the thing is, when we're connected, we know what to do. Yeah. We know where to kiss. We know what body part to kiss, what to say, when to look, when to close our eyes, when to bend. Like, we know that. Intuitively, yeah. when we trust our intuition, we know what to do. Which totally goes back to what you were saying earlier about being present in Absolutely. the moment, right? Like, if you're present, then the intuition totally, like, it, it's there. You, you like, hear it. You hear your yeah. inner voice. You know what to do. Uh, and then you just do it. And it's not, if it's not, if you, like, if you guess wrong, well, you guess wrong. Yeah. <laughs> try, try something else. <laughs> try something else. Right? And it's, like, it's a constant game. That's why sex is fun. Yeah. We forget about that. We forget that sex is actually can be fun. Yeah. Because we're so focused on, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do this. Okay. <laughs> like, all this plan. How do I look? How do I look? Do I look? And then it becomes, oh, no. Oh, it's actually fun. <laughs> Play with it. Get yeah. messy. Like, have your boop one there that, you know, and they're like, yeah. just go for it. Whipped cream. Whip cream. <laughs> Why not? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I love it. Like I love this is a fantastic conversation. I love so I see Walt joined. What did Sean say? As people get older, doesn't it change? Meaning like meaning like doesn't it change in the sense of the funness? wonder um yeah sean if you can i'm gonna go ahead and kind of go with it but if you you know clarify what it, you you know what are you looking for me to answer just let me know if i'm you know if i'm not answering that so what i see when it says uh, as it get you know um as it change so our bodies change mm. right let's start there yeah like we're not 16 anymore you know like through th all life yeah right our <laughs> bodies change like continually physical abilities you know size of it mm -hmm. um when it comes to female the moisture right it's you know it, it's not there as it was before mm -hmm. so all that stuff you know changes that's where we have lubricants and that's where we have adjustments you know and all that stuff um it also changes you know with the relationship as you you know, you continue being in a relationship. We know yeah. that the first six months are one way and then it gets like, well, you know, I want it to be as it used to be. It's not always going to be as it used to be. Yeah. And if you used to have sex five times per day, it may not happen anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like it might slow down a right? Bit. Because of the schedule, because your life is different than it was when you were 20, right? You have much more responsibilities. Maybe yeah. it's kids, maybe it's job, maybe, you know, you have a business. So that will look differently, right? values change mm. you know maybe if you were you know when we were younger you were like i would just have the spontaneous sex right now in a bathroom of you know in vegas yeah. somewhere you know in a strip club well maybe now i don't want to have it you know yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, like in the bed all right after maybe. a shower <laughs> <laughs> After I had my tea. Fully relaxed after I had my tea. <laughs> right? For, and for some people don't. It's not like it's for everyone. But, you know, like that's, again, when it comes to that authentic, you are sexual, you want that chicken, what is it for you now? Yeah. What have been, what have changed? Mm. And be okay with that. Wait, John no. says the zones change. The zones change. Yeah. yeah. Some, you know, the zones change in a way that, um, you know, when it comes to the zones, I'm, you know, I'm going to advocate that, you know, or orgasm can happen anywhere in the body yeah. right so it's really doesn't need to be uh you know i can massage get orgasm i can go exercise and you know like it's really doesn't need to be but in a way that the zones when it comes to pleasure it can change not only with age change day to day mm. you know yeah, it yeah. can change partner to partner yeah. right if i had you know a sexual activity with one partner one way it doesn't with the next partner i'm gonna enjoy the same thing yeah right because it's a different person the connection is different the body is different the also even with different. the same partner like if you're doing it, the only same with the same partner yeah you know uh, a lot of things change and for some people it may not yeah someone may say well for me th things don't change great yeah. Right. That one really comes to knowing you knowing your things and when things change, you actually be okay with that. Yeah. Right. Uh, because we change, you know, we all change our spiritual growth, change our knowledge, change, you know, everything changes. So it would be, you know, it would be weird if our sexuality wouldn't change. Right. right? The time that we spend with it, you know, that and it's also the energy. Listen, we all have, you know, the energy vi vibration kind of a changes in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so. Some people want less sex. Some people have, want more sex than we want. Yeah, that can that can go both ways. Yeah, I know people who are like I didn't have so much sex when I was younger. I have much more sex. Now. Yeah, fantastic, right? I right. mean, I know for me, like totally, it, it has ebbed and flowed. Like being someone who you know, I think I don't know statistically speaking, but you know, people who've been married for decades or whatever, I'm sure they go through their ups mm -hmm. and downs. Absolutely. But you know, for someone who never got married, it's like. There's been times in my life where it's like all I could think about was like what my sexual relationship was going to be and who I was going to have sex with. And it was like the focus. Mm -hmm. And then there's been times where it's like totally asexual, like just 
I mean, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, like we do change Absolutely. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I see Penny. Hi, Penny. And Joseph joined us. Hi, you guys. I love you guys. So let's try to get one more of these in. Here's the thing. Yeah, like, we're like, <laughs> right? we're not like number three, but this is such a good juicy conversation. Like I wouldn't want to trade it for the world. So we we're like, we're speeding through the hour. Like always the hour goes by way too quickly, but I would like, if you're available next Monday, we should continue this as a like part two, if you're available to do I'm, it. I don't think yeah, I'm sure. here next Monday, but I definitely can work out some Monday. Yeah. Though. It's yeah. the summer of yeah. sex exploration. So even if it's a few weeks from now, we might have to like revisit all of this. Cause I always tend to like have too much content. And run it's out of always right. <laughs> it's so much info always. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Absolutely. So let's do this one. See if we can, you know, how much we can get in. So the third one they pose as a question, what type, of emotional connection do women need so mm-hmm. many women they say many women desire an emotional connection with their partner in order to release themselves and enjoy the peak of sexual pleasure however the phrase emotional connection can have varying meanings for different women they say for some it's just a simple respect and love for their partner but for others it can be associated with more complicated factors therefore it is imperative that women make their bond stronger with their partner to attain ultimate bliss Okay. Yeah. What do you think about? Yeah. That? So there are a few few things to that, right? Um, I definitely agree that you know emotional connection is needed, and I definitely agree that um, it's up to you what your definition of your emotional connection is, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Not because a lot of you know we have so much information around that how emotional connection should be. Mm-hmm. Versus for me, it might be a completely different thing, yeah. right? So really knowing what is that emotional connection to me, what do I need? Is that trust? Is that for me being able to feel secure uh, with, you know, naked, getting my body naked and be secure with that person, you know, yeah. and knowing that I'm not going to be shamed and, you know, that I'm going to be accepted and loved the way I am. Yeah. Uh, or it's that building that vulnerability piece or some people have connection through joy. Mm. They laugh together and yeah. then like, you know, and listen, sometimes we just see someone and we know it. <laughs> right. Like and like, it. I don't need to even for them to open up their mouth. I like. Okay, I want you right now, right? Here, right? Um, so that's what I said. There is like few pieces to that because sometimes we put so much meaning for emotional connection, and it's like you need to have that. You know, you need to find that one person to have a great sex. Mm-hmm. And I'm not diminishing. Listen, it it absolutely can be. I'm mm-hmm. not diminishing that. There is a you know emotional connection. It's a huge, huge you know benefit when it comes to sexuality. But I just feel sometimes. It's like with the com- with the conversation that you know we used to have that you have to be, have be married to have sex, right? Mm-hmm, so there's no yeah. sex in their marriage. So not, right now we became more liberal. It's like you can have sex before marriage. You can we we'll give you permission. Right? <laughs> uh, cultural permission. Cultural permission. Cultural permission. Have you have sex before marriage, marriage. <laughs> but you need to make sure you have emotional connection. Yeah. Because otherwise, no. You know, you either slut or it's and it's like we condition people actually to believe that they need that connection. Otherwise, sex is not going to be good. Yeah, which might be true. Or that there's you. something wrong. With or there's it, something wrong like with morally. it. Morally, which might be true for you, but maybe not. Yeah. Listen, I had so many times amazing sex just because the partner was because I know how to take my responsibility for my orgasm and because the partners knew what they're doing, yeah. and I had zero connection with them. Quite, yeah. It was really um. You know, as you know, and it kind of contradicts, but I because I said so much that sex begins before bed, and you want to like create that connection before bed, and that's mm-hmm. what connection happens in sex. Mm-hmm. But it's also sometimes um, it's I guess it's really when you you know have that connection with yourself, mm-hmm. that connection can happen without connection can happen just you see, like seeing person and like yeah. meeting right now, be yeah. like seeing sitting with you. And like looking into your eyes and be like, I feel you inside. Like, what's yeah. <laughs> right? yes, hit on me. <laughs> so it's like really sometimes, you know, yes. And yeah. like, that's where you get to discover what you need for that emotional connection. But yeah. sometimes don't get like so into that, that that would be like stopping you from, yeah. you know, because it's not always. Yeah. And I'm not saying like, oh, go be slut, you know, I mean, go be if you want. <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't get some rules in, in the no class. judgment. No okay. judgment. But like, I, you know, what I'm not trying to say, like, you know, go just fuck around without like no connection needed. But like, well, you get to figure out that for yourself. Yeah. Not what other people say. Not even what I'm saying right now. But like, really going. Oh, maybe I do do need. Maybe I don't need it. And like, 
you know, what do I need? Yeah. And what is my emotional connection? What it means to me? See, I definitely think like as I get, as I've gotten older, I finally had to, and this was just my situation. I had to admit to myself that I needed an emotional mm-hmm. connection. Like when I was younger, I felt this sort of pressure, especially, I mean, in most of my twenties, I was in a, in a relationship, but you know, before I was in that relationship and even right after that relationship, there was like this pressure to be like very sex in the city, Samantha, mm. like, you know, like I can be disconnected and all of that stuff. I don't know why. I don't know if I put the pressure on myself or where that came from, yeah. but it took maturing and getting older to be yeah. able to just admit that in order to feel comfortable enough to have an orgasm and to be into it that mm-hmm. way, I do need to have an emotional connection. Yeah. And what that means for me is, you know, a whole litany of things yeah, yeah, yeah. that I just wasn't even paying attention to. Cause yeah. I was like, Oh no, you're like, you're you know, career girl and you're sophisticated. You so yeah, you can, you can have <laughs> sex and you're going to enjoy it no matter what. And you know, it just, yeah. Yeah, it, it's it doesn't the, work the, that way. Again, it's a key from yeah. that awareness. Right? Yeah. And that like was, what yourself. is it for you? What is it right now? Listen, today it may be, I may need that spiritual connection and really like just being hugged. Yeah. It's again, what sex means to you, Yeah. right? For some, you know, maybe do I need like an, or, you know, maybe I just need someone to run down on me today and I'll be, that's what I need today, right? Yeah. Maybe I just need that sexual massage and being kissed all over and that's all I need today, right? It's also being aware what what right now. I mean, but I do need to fuck someone who I just like saw on the street, but I like feel, you know, that I, you know, yeah. And and again, why? So what do I need? That am I running from something? Mm. And then running to something or from something? And I'm trying to right now hide my loneliness and pain, and that's what I'm trying. Right. You know, it's like I like squash my emotions to so do this. Instead. Exactly. It's like again, like what are you? Cake. <laughs> like eating cake, like eating ice cream, right? For some of it's gym, for some it's alcohol. Yeah. It's always because sex can be used as that numbness yeah. and run away, right? And like, oh, let me prove that I'm good enough. I'm, I can, you know, let me see. If I, I don't feel good enough, so let me prove myself. Okay, that guy, I can yeah. get him. Let me go and prove that to myself that I'm, you know, that I got this, right? Yeah, yeah. All that, because we do use sex for that. So it's really, again, knowing what it's needed for you and what it means to you. Totally. Let's see who's chiming in. Lee says, definitely part two. He wants us to continue on with this conversation. That means you have to come back at some point, Julia. Michelle says, very true. Penny says, I need that emotional connection. (laughs) And Brian joined us. Welcome, Brian. I think that that's everything that you said is like so on point and I love it and it's beautiful and we're so running out of time. I want to try one more. Try to get in. Okay. Oh, wait. What was this one? Do you know about your body? It might seem surprising, but it's true that most women are unable to reach orgasm because they're not familiar with their bodies. That's so true Mm -hmm. this is one of the biggest obstacles in reaching the big o some women usually don't achieve orgasm by penetration but through clitoral stimulation so i'm cutting what they're saying to give you time but we have like about two minutes so that we can fit everything in yeah definitely uh i'll you know i'll be short as well yes That's it. Yes. Know your body. Know your body. Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely know your body in a way that um, know what makes you pleasure, gives you pleasure, yeah. right? And it may be on genitals, right? Meaning it may be vaginal, it may be G spot, it might be clitoris, uh, or it may be not. It may be squeezing your nipples hard. Mm-hmm. It may be being spanked. It may be being choked. All it may things. be being your hair pulled, right? <laughs> it may be all of the things, things in combination. It may, you know, like hair pulling. I don't like that. Like, um, <laughs> So that's, you know, that knowing that, yeah, right? Yeah. Definitely know your body and definitely know what you, what you want and be connected to that through the process, right? Because sometimes, especially when a woman goes through the cycle, you know, menstrual cycle, uh, even like, you know, uh, it can be, you know, it can be different in there. So yeah. it also can, you know, affect the, the, the orgasm. Um, yeah, knowing all that, knowing, you know, when, when, when and what you like and masturbation. Um, I still that the next one is like the self stimulation. Masturbation yeah. is definitely key on how and what you like. And playing with yourself, not only like doing that five minutes masturbation, but actually like allowing yourself to have, you know, the whole experience with yourself. But that's another topic. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's why we're going to need part two so that we can really delve into like, you know, these details and stuff. And we still have, you know, four more that we're going to we're going to go through. And Penny says spanking. Yes. Yes. Spanking. (laughs) We're all about that. So this was amazing, Julia. Oh, my gosh. I love this. Like, I, I wish we could go on and on for hours about it because. I know there's so much more and so much more to like be gained and to learn and to grow from. Right. Um, Hopefully you guys out there are feeling more orgasmic or, you know, more 
supported in causing orgasms. What did Michelle say? And looking at, at I think she means at your yes, pussy. Yes, yes, absolutely. Most women have never looked at their pussy. That is so true. They were, Hi, Mikey Ronan just joined us. Happy birthday, honey. Yes, like just yes. the looking at it, which I personally didn't start doing until I was probably well into my mm. 20s, but it's very important. Yep. You know, Becoming friends with your pussy. Get out pussy. of that shame story. Even saying that out loud, right? Like saying pussy and masturbation and actually like, loving it yeah right mm-hmm. looking in the mirror all the time i always say my clients one of the you know exercises i give like look at your mirror and actually like explore yourself yes and love yourself Ugh. love yourself love love yourself. that's the key to all of that's it right <laughs> when we come down it to does. it that's that's it right that's there the so uh we're gonna have to wrap up this part of the conversation but we're coming back lee says part two he's cheering for us penny says love you guys so that means we definitely have to come back and you know julia i feel like awesome. you're gonna be a semi-regular Fantastic. on the show i love it so thank you everybody who's joined us for the summer of sexploration now i just want to share with you wait where is it a couple things just before we go you know we always have to do housekeeping you know that i have my um coaching program 45 day intensive the secret art of seductive singlehood which is not a sex coaching program it's really just about you know getting that space of loving yourself and being able to have a singlehood that is happy and joyful and fulfilled and you know provocative because of all of those things And also, you know, to help you discover and get clarity and, you know, what it is you really need. I think a lot of times as women, we just sort of have an airy fairy thing in our head where we think we know what we need, Mm -hmm. but clarity is key. Clarity is key. Right? So that you have something to get aligned with. As always, I'll give you the three things to make your love and life sweeter. Now for our talk today, these are the three that I came up with and we totally touched on all of them. Right. The first one is release any shame you have around sex. So I say that so flippantly, like it's so easy to do that. But, you know, sometimes we're blocked by shames that we don't even realize that we have, like our story Mm -hmm. about sex. I know the way that I grew up is very, you know, Christian household and sex was a taboo topic. You know, all it really was about was don't do it. Don't bring home babies. Keep your legs closed. You know, wear your undergarments and don't be out past 10. Hide, yeah. Yeah, like hide, you know, be a little bit shameful about it. Make sure you wash it like that. (laughs) Make sure you don't think about it. Right? That's basically the the sex ed that we got. Except for, you know, what I looked for or in you know what I read and things like that mm-hmm. Nancy Friday for those of you who were you know teenagers in the 80s Nancy Friday books but you know the the idea of like releasing that shame is a journey to go on absolutely how do I let that that conversation that doesn't work go mm-hmm. how do I stop like being hard on my body right my third one is learn to love your body like we were just talking about learn to love yourself move it feed it healthy food we always think like loving your body is this sort of like fake body positivity where it's like ooh I'm big and delicious yeah, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that I don't want to invalidate that but loving your body exactly it comes from inside also it's also feeding your body things that make it feel healthy getting enough sleep mm-hmm. you know exercising and moving it and just making sure it's as like optimal function yep and number three I just threw in stop having mercy sex ladies <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Take it from one who's been yeah. there. Like, just don't, no more mercy sex. Mm-hmm. No more, you know, feeling guilty because he spent a lot of money. Like, really choose partners that you really, truly, Absolutely. right, want to be with. Yeah. <sighs> Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, this is your turn, Julia. Tell us, like, how we can find you. Tell us, oh, we have just a little bit of time. But tell us how we can find no you. No worries. Tell us about I your actually, book. yeah, I love that you said about sex shame because that's actually currently what I do most. I mean, that's, you know, this month's work. Yeah. Uh, I do have a workbook that it's called 90 Days of Sexual Empowerment, which is a work journal. So it has all these magical questions about how to get that, you know, the shame that we don't even know about out. I love it. Whether, you know, with the conversation that our mothers or guardians taught us about, what are the things that we hide from, Thanks you know, too. all that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I do women's circles online on Skype. Uh, Give all the, the website. Yeah, all that, that information seconds. you can find at sexedwithjulia.com. Yes. Everything is in there. Yes, and definitely go there. All you people out there in armed radio, they're about to leave us. Definitely go to Julia's site so you can do all of the shame release and good stuff and get your orgasms better. The people here on Facebook Live with us, they have a couple more minutes with us. We, you know, we take a little more time and we okay. can. Okay. You know, after armed radio people leave. That's why armed radio people, you should be on Facebook Live too. 